I recently proved myself as the world's best club owner by conquering the Premier League, but the media are still hating on me. Apparently, to become the world's best club owner, I need to prove myself in another league. Well, challenge accepted. I've created my own club, but this time in Spain. The goal is to conquer La Liga, but for that, we'll need to beat teams like Barcelona and Real Madrid. But hold up, we're starting right at the bottom in the Segunda Division. Our first objective is to somehow get promoted to La Liga. And that's not going to be easy because our team, let's just say we have a lot of work to do. Talking about our team, it's time to introduce our future legends. Well, hopefully some of them will be. In goal, we've got Amadou Mendes. Hopefully he's got a strong pair of hands because we'll need it. In defense, we've got our club captain, Nils Alonso. Look at his face. He looks like a proper old school defender. Josepa Gonzalez alongside him looks a bit shaky, but he's one for the future. In the midfield, we have Juan Jimenez and rumors say he's like the next Sergio your Busquets. Villa looks like your classic box-to-box -box midfielder, but in the attack is where this team gets a bit juicy. Galeano is by far the most talented player we've got. Dribbling, passing, flair, he's got it all. And in the striker position, we've got Marcos Ray, who's built like a tank. Good in the air, lethal in the box, a classic number nine. Jason Marquez, though, I see nothing in the lad. Just bang average, no disrespect. If we can get signings to improve our team, I reckon there's a chance we could fight for promotion in just our first season. But since we're a new club, we need to first sort out our sponsors. Otherwise, we'll have no money to invest in the club and we'll be bankrupt before we can even get to La Liga. For our kit manufacturers, sadly, we couldn't convince Adidas or Nike. But hey, maybe in the future, they'll want to work with us. For now, though, we're making do with Umbro. They're paying us like 4 million, which is going straight to our transfer budget. But the good news is, thanks to our reputation from conquering the Premier League, we've got Netflix as our shirt sponsor. Maybe they want to do a behind-the-scenes documentary. But regardless, that's our shirt sponsor sorted and they're paying us 6 million. That brings our budget to a total of 10 million in the Segunda Division. Not bad at all. Before we start making signings, though, I think we need to see our team in action. We're also so close to the first game of the season. Before that, though, we're revealing our new kits for the season and oh boy, do they look good. It's now time for kickoff. Our journey from Segunda Division to hopefully La Liga begins now. Sadly, though, our start was far from ideal. Keeper Mendes? We've got to be saving that. Who else can take the lead? But thankfully, we quickly won a penalty. No way we got a penalty, and it's a chance for someone to get the first goal. I think we've got to take it with Mark Gossery. He's our center forward. He's got a chance to write history here. Can he score our first ever goal? He can. And of course, it's a penalty. Soon after our first goal, we saw why Galliano is the most talented player at the club. Need to see what our attack can do. And here's Galliano, probably one of our better players in the attack as he looks for a pass, can't make it. Might just go for goal. Oh my God, that is incredible from Galliano. How did he pull that off? But towards the end, we realized that the Segunda Division was not going to be easy. The truth is, if we want to get promoted to La Liga, we need to make signings. And thankfully, we've got 10 million to do just that. Our right wing position is holding us back. Jason Marquez, I'll be honest, he's a bit of a fraud. We really need to have someone special in that position. And Matias Sula could be that guy. He's Argentinian, left footed as well. Reminds me of a certain Lionel Messi. Negotiations with this club were tricky, but we managed to get the fee down to 4.2 million. With that, we've made our first signing of the club. Matias Sula joins S2G Club, the football. With Sula playing down the right flank, we were so much better. We even secured our first win. Everything was going well. We were winning games. Marcos Ray was scoring goals for fun. But suddenly, I receive an email. Release clause paid for Galliano. I couldn't believe it. A Premier League club was interested in our most talented player and honestly if Galliano decides to leave there's nothing we can do about it but thankfully Galliano loves this club and he also loves his money so after some negotiations we made Galliano our highest paid player and that was enough for now to keep him at the club with Galliano staying we made our push towards promotion there was only one club standing in our way and it was Levante if we can beat them we go top of the league I see Marcos Ray making a beautiful run he's bamboozled them left foot oh what a goal early on we strike Marcos Rey, the man who just can't stop scoring. We take the lead against Levante.
No, no, no. Of course, from a corner, Mustafi ends up scoring. Are you actually kidding me? Oh, no. Oh, no. They've broken through. They've broken through, and they do get the goal. Levante with the dagger. Oh, Marcos Reyes somehow broken through. This could be a big moment. This could be a huge moment. Of course, Marcos Reyes carrying the team on his back. He's our number nine, our legend. Let's go. Even though we couldn't beat Levante, it was only a draw. We're still second in the league in the fight. But while our focus was to secure promotion, I realized that we had a traitor in our squad. Jason Marquez the Fraud had decided to join Levante. To be fair, he was kind of useless for us, so I'm not surprised. But to still see him join one of our rivals was super frustrating. But hey, at least the funds we received from this deal is gonna go straight to our youth academy, which hopefully will reap benefits later on. Who knows in the future, we'll have a wonder kid come through. While the hunt for promotion was on, we kind of got distracted by the Spanish Cup, where somehow we were producing performance after performance, knocking out even La Liga clubs. We were even scoring Puskas award-winning goals. And somehow, after all that, we made it to the Copa del Rey final, where we're going to be up against Barcelona. This is what we wanted to face clubs like Barca and Madrid, but I never expected to do it in our first season itself. And it's actually happening. S2G club the football up against Barca. This is also a huge night for Marcos Rey, who is a former Barcelona Academy product, but they rejected him and kicked him out. Can he get redemption? The final kicked off and I quickly realized that Barcelona were on a completely different level. Robert Lewandowski looking inside for Rafinha and there's the first goal for Barcelona. Uh, the pain begins. Barcelona have themselves a free kick and Lewandowski, what? Yo, this is, this is La Liga. This is the level of the best clubs in Spain. We honestly were getting destroyed and Marcos Rey couldn't do a thing. Maybe the pressure, the emotional factor, it all got to him. The media then had a field day calling Marcos Rey a complete fraud, which was frustrating to see. This was a huge setback, but we still had the league and we needed to secure promotion. And here we are playing Levante once again. This time, we need to win. But remember Jason Marquez? Somehow he's completely transformed his career. He's been a different player at Levante. Look at his stats for Levante. It's actually unreal. If we're gonna want to win the title and get promoted, to La Liga, we're gonna have to beat the traitor. Levante, though, took the early lead and Marquez was celebrating on us. We really can't afford to lose this game and thankfully, our team stepped up. We need other players to step up and it could be Matthias Sula and it is. He scores, gets us back into the game. We needed that. Villa. Looking for Galliano, the turn, the turn, and the finish. Let's go. We take the lead against Levante. Marcos Reyes having a tough time, but no problem. His teammates are backing him up. Marcos Reyes got an in behind. This is his chance. Go on. It would be lovely to see him get on the score sheet. Marcos Reyes, he's back. It took him a while to adapt, but he is now back. This is what Marcos Reyes is all about, and there's the finish as well. All he needed was one goal to get back in a rhythm. Yes, guys, we've done it. Despite the number of setbacks, we've managed to win the Segunda title. We're heading to La Liga, but this is just the start. Don't forget, our goal is to become the best club in Spain. We've made it to La Liga. And it's crazy to think we're going to be in the same league as Barcelona and Real Madrid. But last season, we saw how much better Barca was. They destroyed us in the cup final. And you know, Real Madrid aren't going to be easy either. The only way we can compete and survive in La Liga is by investing in our team and improving it. But we have a problem. Looks like Netflix did not enjoy us getting embarrassed in the Spanish Cup final last season. And because of that they're pulling out of our deal. This is shocking and it leaves us with no sponsor for the rest of the season. If we don't find a shirt sponsor, we're gonna have no money, which is gonna lead us to getting relegated. Being the club owner, it's my responsibility to go out there and find us a deal. And so I approached Prime, which is KSI and Logan Paul's drink. But they told me that they don't do deals with teeny tiny clubs. That is so freaking disrespectful. To kind of get a bit of revenge on them, I thought, why not approach their big rivals? Yup. Gatorade. And guess what? They were more than willing to do a deal with us. But in the contract with them, they had a few objectives that we needed to complete. First one, they want us to finish mid-table in La Liga. And second, they also want us to sign a veteran legend. Tricky objectives, but they're offering us 20 million. And since we're not in the best of situations, we've got no choice but to accept it. Oh, and by the way, we also signed a deal with New Balance worth 10 million. And look at our new season skits. They look amazing. With 
30 million now as our budget. We've got a huge task to build a squad that's competitive enough for La Liga. Good thing is, from last season, a lot of our players have grown tremendously. Marcos Ray won the golden boot last time around, and he's now 75 rated. Galeano has improved massively too. In fact, our entire team has grown. If we can improve this team with quality signings, we should be fine this season. To start things off, I'm negotiating with David Silva. Can you imagine a Man City legend like him joining our club? And I know he's old, but remember, we need to complete the objective by signing a veteran player, and David Silva fits the bill. And so for 10 million, we make our first signing as a La Liga club. And I'll tell you this, instantly David Silva on his debut showcased what he's all about. While things are going well on the pitch, we're still working on more transfers. This time, trying to sign a player from Barcelona, it's Julian Araujo. For 6.2 million, seems like a bargain, and we've got ourselves a new right back. With these two signings, we've really improved the overall quality of our team, but are we good enough to compete in La Liga? Well, maybe not, because this time we were facing Real Madrid, and they gave us a footballing lesson. After two games in La Liga, we've just got one point. This is not good. With the remaining transfer budget, I decided to improve our backline by signing Nianzu. The kid's got a lot of potential, and he just about fitted our budget. Hopefully, he'll help us defend better, because we'll need it. And thankfully, all the new signings definitely helped us out, because we end up securing our first win in La Liga. But the truth is, we were still very inconsistent. La Liga was a lot more difficult than I imagined, especially for Mark Ospreay, whose form dipped massively this season. But nothing was working for him, and even the media was hating on him. I guess last season's defeat to Barcelona was still playing on his mind. Thankfully, we had Galeano and Matias Sula, who really picked up the mantle and helped keep us out of the relegation zone. We now have a very important game against Sevilla. And guess who is Sevilla's new star signing? Yup, it's Jason Marquez. I absolutely made a big mistake selling him, but what can we do now? The worst thing is, he's out here giving interviews and dissing me. We cannot let him score against us, but Sevilla are much better than us and they score first. But thankfully, David Silva was able to unlock their defense. But then, the worst possible thing happened. They've got an in behind you. No, that's a silly challenge from me and it's gonna be a penalty. And would you believe it? It's Marquez who's taking this penalty and Marquez scores. No! I cannot believe we let him score. From then on, Sevilla took the game away from us. Things were getting worse for us. We were 18th in La Liga, struggling for goals. Marcos Rey was not performing. We needed more options, but we also didn't have any money. But thankfully, all our investments in the youth academy paid off because there is a super talent waiting for us in the academy. It's Gabriel Figueroa. This man is a giant. The world's tallest player, apparently. And he's also incredible on the Paul, I've never seen a player like him. And of course, on his debut, he showed what he's all about. It's January now and we're still in the fight to avoid relegation. I'm thinking if we can somehow make one transfer, that could be huge, but we're running really low on funds. But while I was going through options, I found that Sergio Ramos was available on a free transfer. But would he be interested in joining us? Negotiations were tough and we had to convince him about our project, but in the end, it worked and Sergio Ramos is joining s Club the football. What an incredible transfer. When we signed David Silva, the quality of this team rose up massively. I'm hoping the same will happen with Ramos. And yes, with Ramos, we had a leader at the back. He was dominating our defense and we were actually winning games. The transfer window was about to end and I was actually really happy with my team. But then Villa, our box-to-box -box midfielder, the man who scored the greatest goal in this club's history, he was sold. I got an offer of 19 million and I just couldn't turn it down. It was too good to be true. Thankfully, though, I had a plan with this money. Pablo Torre at Barcelona wasn't getting much game time. He's the kind of player that could add so much to our midfield. And so for 13.6 million, we signed Pablo Torre. Our team was now genuinely looking insane. We'd improved it massively, quality in midfield, in defense as well. We cannot afford to get relegated. And now we face Jason Marquez's Sevilla. I had no interest in seeing him smile after he beats us, so this time we showed him what we're all about. But here's Pablo Torre, the new kid on the block, is playing in a lovely pass for David Silva. And David Silva actually scores. Let's go. 1-0 against Sevilla. Could this be the turning point of our season? Full time, guys, and we've actually pulled it off. A win against Sevilla. Marquez, come outside. But the danger of relegation is still looming. And we're facing Barcelona. We need to get a result against them to survive. Marcos Rey has had an awful season, but can he redeem himself by scoring? against his former club. Sanogo 
Looking inside. Moving in for Marcos Re. Marcos Re against Barcelona. He's done it. Marcos Re against his former club. Oh, man. He's been waiting for this moment. Oh, Marcos Re fighting for every ball now. Look at him go. They can't stop him. They literally can't stop him. Barcelona players tumbling as Re gets his second at the Camp Nou. The win against Barca gave us the momentum we needed. We end the season finishing 12th in La Liga. Our team looks incredible. We've built a great foundation for the future next season it's time to push for more it's now time for season three but this time as a mainstay in la liga relegation is no longer a threat thankfully ever since we showed the world that we can beat teams like barcelona there's been a lot of interest in us especially from the middle east qatar airways wants to sponsor us and oh boy they're willing to break the bank this could be the biggest deal we've ever signed they're offering us 100 million and all they want is return for us to get top four I like this. It's super ambitious. They're giving us the tools as well to transform the club. We're taking it. To make things even better, finally, Adidas are interested in working with us. For 30 million, they're going to be our kit sponsors. And look at the kits they've come up with for the season. They look amazing. We've now got a historic 130 million as our transfer budget. And now our goal is to challenge the big boys of La Liga. Top four is our goal. And would you look at that? We're making our first signing already in Fran Garcia. Even Real Madrid rate him. And I know he's going to be amazing for us. Oh, and by the way, this is our most expensive transfer yet. 43 million was the fee. And looks like that's money well spent because Fran Garcia on his debut was amazing. We still have about 80 million left. And maybe it's time to bring in a midfielder. Now, hold up. This one's going to be controversial, but I'm bringing Paul Pogba to S2G Club the football. I know the talent he possesses and we could give him that second chance in life that he needs. Plus, he was available for free and I can't say no to that. While we were focusing on improving the team with transfer, Spurs on the pitch, the world's tallest player, Gabriel Figueroa, continued to dominate. Not gonna lie, Figueroa was slowly becoming a starter. Marcus Ray better step up. Anyways, back to more transfer stuff. We still had money for one more signing. Vicha Kvaracikilia was on the shortlist, but he just ended up being a bit too expensive. Instead, Xavi Simmons seemed like a more logical option. A young player, ton of talent, and I think he would fit our team perfectly. So for 74 million, we broke the bank and signed Xavi. Xavi Simmons. We've improved our team massively and now we're facing Real Madrid. This will be a great test to see if we can make a push for the top four spot. But of course, it's Real Madrid and we do end up conceding. But there's a lot to take from that game. We end up getting a draw against Madrid. That just shows how much we've improved our team. Meanwhile, we once again managed to beat Barcelona and it was Pablo Torre who ended up scoring against this former club. Oh, and by the way, Xavi Simmons also put on a masterclass in that one. But after the full-time whistle, Xavi Simmons was seen talking with boss's manager Xavi for a long time. Wonder what that could be about. Soon things started to get really difficult for us. The goal stopped coming for Figueroa out of nowhere. I guess he was focused more on doing late night TV show appearances. Also club captain Nils Alonso was getting exposed at the back but we can't blame him. He's getting old. And overall we continued to be super inconsistent. Halfway through the season and we're ninth in La Liga. Our goal was to finish top four and this is embarrassing. To make things worse there are rumors that Bar Barcelona are interested in one of our players and they're willing to pay their release clause. Could it be Pablo Torre? Maybe Matias Sula? This could be disastrous. In the end, we found out that it was Xavi Simmons. Just six months after joining us, he's made the move to Barcelona. He gave an interview explaining his reasons and honestly, we can't fault it. The truth is, we're a tiny club in comparison to Barcelona. But the only good part is, at least we now have 130 million to try and improve our team further. I'm now thinking maybe going for another RG Argentinian might work. Alejandro Garnacho maybe? He could offer something completely different. The raw pace he's got, unreal. And so, for 43 million, we sign Alejandro Garnacho. And you know what? Garnacho's arrival kind of revived Marcos Rey, because Garnacho's pace was automatically creating so many chances for Marcos. But while it was exciting times with Garnacho and Marcos Rey performing, it was also incredibly sad, because we had to bid goodbye to our captain, Nils Alonso. The time was right for him to leave. He's our captain, club legend we thank him for his services but it's time to move on with that it's the perfect time to sign a new center
center back. We've got the money. Maybe someone like Konate or Saliba. But the player in the end I've gone for is Kim Min Ji. I feel like he completely fits with the values of S2G Club, the football. He's the kind of player that can lead the team from the back. And for 47 million, it's an absolute steal. With all these improvements we've made to our team, surely we've got to finish better than nine. Our team is way better than that. And also looks like we've got pressure from Qatar Airways because they've sent me an email. They're basically saying that if we don't get top four this season, they're going to terminate our contract. With that, we're going to lose financing for next season. Our budget's going to tumble. We'll get back to being a mid-table club. We can't allow that. We have no choice but to finish top four. With Figaro starting to be a bit inconsistent, I'm deciding to put my faith in Marcos Ray for the rest of the season. He needs to step up. And guess what? He delivered starting with the hat trick. To be honest, others were doing their bits too, like Garnacho was performing really well. Pogba from midfield was adding so much. Things also got a bit emotional when David Silva announced his retirement. Honestly, what a player. He brought in so much quality to the team. We gave him one last game to celebrate his career. We're now almost at the end of the season, fifth in La Liga. They still hope we can secure a top four spot, but for that, we need to beat Barcelona. To make things worse, Barcelona have just signed Jason Marquez. It's crazy to see his career trajectory. He went from being called a fraud, playing for Sevilla, and now, of course, the very top at Barcelona. It's extremely frustrating that I didn't judge his talent appropriately, and now I'm, I'm paying the price. But for now, we need to beat him to qualify for Champions League. The game kicked off, and we almost scored an incredible goal. We kept putting the pressure on Barca, and thankfully, it paid off. But then Jason Marquez did the impossible. There's no way Jason Marquez is kicking us out of the Champions League like that. We need someone to respond, and that someone was Marcos but then we can see it again. In the dying moments of the game, though, we had one last chance. Can we take it? Barcelona defense has been caught lacking. That's what happens when you start Clement Longley. And Marcos Ray takes advantage as he puts us into the lead. Marcos Ray with the legendary performance against Barcelona. And surely that's it. Yes, guys, we've done it. Top four has been secured. What a season this has been. But the journey is only going to get harder. Soon, we'll be in the Champions League. Season four begins and it's time for the Champions League group stage draw. And this time we've got our invite. Oh wow, we've got a pretty tricky group. Napoli and Frankfurt are going to be tough games. We need to be prepared for the Champions League this season. And thankfully, Qatar Airways are renewing their deal with us. We've got a rocky relationship with them, but since we managed to finish top four, they're willing to give us another 100 million. But this time around, they're raising the stakes as well. They want us to win the league. I like the ambition and let's give it everything to pull this off. We're also getting a new sponsor in terms of Nike. They're paying us 30 million. They've come up with some amazing kits. With that, 130 million for the season ahead. Surely we can build a team that can compete in both La Liga as well as the Champions League. The good news is over these last three seasons, our team has grown incredibly well. I mean, look at Marcus Ray. Even with his struggles, he's reached an 84 overall. Matias Suler as well, Juan Jimenez. The team is looking brilliant. A few signings here and there, and I think we'll have a frightening team. So to start things off, we're making our first signing by bringing in Arnau Martinez. His face is going to be so useful. We're now starting off our season against Barcelona. Time to face our former players Jason Marquez and Xavi Simmons again. If we want to win La Liga, we need to show that we can convincingly beat our rivals. But for this game, Paul Pogba was unavailable because of an injury. And without him, Barcelona dominated the game. One injury and we just couldn't compete. Squad depth is something we need to improve if we want to compete in all competitions. And Moises Caicedo is that guy. He can literally play anywhere in the midfield, so if Pogba's injured, no problem. This guy's got the work rate as well. And for just 52 million, what a deal. With those two signings in this window, I feel like we've got the squad depth to challenge for both La Liga as well as the Champions League. But on transfer deadline day, we went in for the shock of our life. Alejandro Garnacho's release loss was paid. And this time it was Real Madrid. There was nothing I could do as the clock ticked away and the trans window shut. We had just lost our first choice left winger and we didn't have any time to bring in a replacement. I guess until January, the only option we have is to trust Galliano. It's now time for our Champions League debut. The question is, can we get our first Champions League goal with Sula? Anything seems to be possible. 
Looks to play this one inside for Marcos Ray. Oh, Marcos Ray. That is one of the best goals you'll see. Unbelievable from Marcos. That's what we want to see from him. There's always a few mistakes we keep making. And now we might be opened up. And yes, we are. I said, oh. Oh, looking for Marcos Ray. No way. No way. Marcos Ray in the 84th minute. It's always him. He is him. This season, Ray has delivered in almost every game we've asked him to. Although we had a great start to our Champions League campaign, things started to get more difficult. We started to lose games and drop points. And in the midst of all this, I get a message from Gabriel Figueroa. He's disappointed with his lack of game time and will leave if we don't fulfill his demands. Eventually, I do come up with an agreement with him. We're going to play Gabriel Figueroa in the rest of our Champions League games. That's the only way he'll stay. Thankfully though, Figueroa is very, very good and he did not disappoint. We managed to top our Champions League group. Also, it's January, which means we can finally improve our team and with the departure of Garnacho, we need to do that. I'm thinking of a left winger as well as a midfielder. To start things off, we signed Thiago. I know he's a veteran, but a bit of experience is what we need. For the left wing position, I considered many options like Kvicha, but once again, too expensive. I also thought of trusting Galliano, but in the first half of the season, he really didn't show promise. Maybe this level is a bit too high for him, which is frustrated. But then it hit me, why not sign one of the world's most underrated players? It's Mitoma. He could add something completely different to our attack. And so for 46 million, we signed the Japanese sensation. It's been an incredible trans window so far, but of course, towards the end, something had to go wrong. Real Betis of all clubs paid the release clause of Fran Garcia. We had no choice but to let him go. Good thing is, we do have money and the trans window is still open. And I think it's time for us to make a statement. Alejandro Balde is moving from Barcelona to S2G Club to football. I've had enough of players being stolen from us. We're gonna steal one from Barcelona. Now that's a statement signing. But sadly, the only statement we've made is from our yeah. medical department because Alejandro Baldi is Ooh. out for the next six months. His season is over before it even started here. And now the only other left back we've got in the club is Sanogo. The kid has been here from day one, so it's his chance to impress. Time for our Champions League round of 16 and we're facing Borussia Dortmund. Mitoma's doing well and so is Matias Sul. It's going to look for a ball for Mitoma. He gets his first goal for us. Let's go. This could be the biggest moment in our club's history for Galeano, and it is. He scores in the 90th minute, 2-0 away from home. Have we actually done it, guys? We might have just booked our spot in the quarterfinals. With that, we've knocked out Dortmund, but it's now time to face Manchester City. This is probably the most difficult game we've ever played, and it was also time for a reality check. Man City absolutely destroyed Bruh. us. The game was so embarrassing that we got an email from Qatar Airways. They've threatened to replace me with Pep Guardiola or Jose Mourinho. Imagine getting sacked from my own club. Nah, that's unacceptable. They're saying that they will pull out all their money if we don't end up winning La Liga. We can't allow that. We have to win the league now. Thankfully, we've been also focusing on La Liga and we're second, just a few points behind Real Madrid. But we're facing Barcelona and Jason Marquez will do anything to stop us from winning the league. He's even been disrespectful respectful before the game in interviews. To make things worse, he even scored against us. La Liga as well as my job was on the line and so we responded. Sorry. Seeing Mitoma, it's a brilliant run. Mitoma, oh, it's a big goal from him. The world's most underrated player shining on a big game night like this. Torre, Sula, oh, that's brilliant. That is brilliant football and I'm sure Jason Marquez can't believe what he's seeing. This is what S2GFC is all about. Looking inside, Marcos Ray. Ray gets the goal against his former club. It had to be him. Marcos Ray sinks Barcelona. This goal keeps us alive in the title race. A huge win against Barcelona. It puts us in a great spot for winning the title. But most importantly, after the game, we met with Jason Marquez in the tunnel. And would you believe it? He kind of apologized for his behavior. And you know what? It's time to put all the bad blood between us behind. We've both learned from our mistakes and time to move on. With the win against Barca, we have done enough to win the league. And yes, we're champions of Spain. From 
the Segunda Division all the way to number one in La Liga. But there's still one more trophy we need to win. It's the Champions League. Before we begin our quest to win the Champions League, if you guys could subscribe to the channel, that would be awesome. We're heading into Season 5 with one objective to win the Champions League. If we somehow pull this off, I can call myself the world's greatest club owner. First thing we're doing this season, though, is terminating our contract with Qatar Airways. You might be thinking, why? 100 million, am I just throwing all that money away? Nope, we just got a better offer from Emirates. And I'm kind of tired of the emails I keep getting from Qatar Airways. So for 120 million, we've just signed a deal with Emirates. But they're also putting pressure on us because they want us to win the Champions League. But hey, our goals align and hence we signed with them. Also, we've renewed our Nike deal for 50 million. And one cool thing they're doing this season is releasing Jordan Special Edition kits. Hopefully, these kits will be lifting the Champions League trophy. With 180 million as our budget, it was time for us to make a statement for all our Champions League rivals. And so we break our transfer record and sign Jude Bellingham, one of the world's best midfielders. If we want to win the Champions League, we need players like him. And instantly, we saw his quality. He was creating goals and scoring them. But soon, we suffered a major setback as Mathias Sula was out for the next four months. He was going to pretty much miss the entire Champions League group stage. And that means we do need another winger. And I thought maybe this is a sign, a chance for an iconic reunion. The player who we once rejected, who went on to carve his own story, maybe it's time for us to work together. That's right, it's Jason Marquez and we're bringing him back to S2G Club the Football. Last season he apologized and we also apologized for the mistake we made calling him a fraud. All the bad blood is aside, why not work together and try and win the Champions League together? And guess what? Marquez's return was iconic. But we were still inconsistent in the Champions League, losing few games here and there. To be fair, we had Bayern in our group and we ended up finishing second. Finishing second though does mean we're going to be up against PSG in the round of 16, which is not good. Before the big game though, I received a message from Gabriel Figueroa. He was disappointed that we didn't give him a chance in the Champions League group stages. The truth is, Marcos Reynao is our number one striker. He won us La Liga and if we want to win the Champions League, I've got to use my best players. The only solution I could find for Figueroa was loaning him out and that's exactly what we did. Sad to see him go, but it was a decision we needed to make. Now, it's time to face PSG. Kylian Mbappe started things off by showing us why he's one of the greats. But is this how our Champions League story was going to end? Absolutely not. In the second leg, Sula back from his injury got the job done. Now, it was RB Leipzig in the quarterfinals and honestly, we made light work of them. But unfortunately, Marcos Rey had suffered an injury and he was going to be out for the semi-finals against Atletico. The only option I can think of is recalling Gabriel Figueroa. This could be the moment he's been waiting for. And so out of nowhere, Figueroa is back with us. I'm glad we didn't sell him and just loaned him out. Back at S2G FC, Figueroa produced one of the greatest target man performances I've ever seen. And in the end, he got rewarded as well. Figueroa with the header, it's done 3-0. We have now made it to the Champions League final. If we win this, I can call myself the greatest club owner. And we're facing Club Bruges. This is our chance to get it done. And we get the dream start in the final. Matea Sula sees Marcos Rey. Big chance. Champions League final. Yes, it had to be him. But soon we paid the price for underestimating Club Bruges. No, no, no. What have I done? It's a howl at the back. No. Second off and it's Club Bruges attacking. What are we doing? Oh, no. The turn and shot. I can't believe it. We're 2-1 down. Thankfully, Sula saved us. Looking for the cutback. Sula goes for goal and that's one goal back at least. Come on. But then we conceded again. Sula had to once again save us. Us. Squaring in for Sula. Simple football, but so effective. Now, we just need one more goal. This game is crazy. And now they're 1v1 with our keeper. Wait, no! They've opened us up, Mendes. That save is worth the trophy alone. The game is coming to an end. Can we somehow still win this? Looking for options. Pablo Torre provides it. Cut back. Marcos Rey. Champions League final. It had to be him. Surely that's it. Wonderfully worked. Marcos Rey. Iconic celebration as well. Surely Surely that's it. It's done, guys. We're Champions League winners from the Segunda Division all the way to being kings of Europe. We've built the world's best club, which makes me the world's greatest club owner. If you enjoyed this video, why not watch me become the greatest club owner in the Premier League? Click here to watch that.